I think this stat is probably a little bit concerning if you're a Bengals fan. In fact, it might be a lot concerning if you're a Bengals fan. So versus teams that primarily play two safety deep coverages, the Bengals average 19.4 points per game. When they play teams that typically don't play two safety deep coverages, that jumps up to 35.2 points per game. The Los Angeles Rams, yeah, they play a decent amount of two safety deep coverages. Again, they mix stuff up. It's not all they do, but this is an element of it. And so I've talked about this a decent amount already about how this reflects the, you know, the Bengals receiving core is a huge part of it. You look at their overall team record when they're playing these teams. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's significant. I mean, when they play teams that, you know, on average have two safety deep coverages, they're two and six, whereas when they're not playing those teams, they're 11 and one. Although should mention one of the wins that I have here was against the Tennessee Titans who, you know, that was in the playoffs. So it's not like it can't be done, but also certainly their offense was not as impressive in that one as it has been uh, in other games. So let's show some film. I think it's important to talk about some film here and talk about, you know, why this is the case and what is going wrong and also what can go right with this stuff. Because first, this play is something that is what you typically want to do against two safety deep coverages. It's a cover two zone and you have, you know, you have one receiver who's kind of going to run a deeper route over the middle, but then you have your tight end who's going to kind of just try to get underneath. And this is how you can methodically move down the field. Look at how when Joe Burrow takes the snap, he's making the right read and throwing this check down. So that's what you want to see. And also good job after the catch, all that good stuff. Couple of issues here. One is that it's just hard to get drives going consistently like this. I mean, when you run 10 plays, something's going to go wrong on one of them, right? There's going to be a hold. There's going to be a drop pass. And if you can't get these chunk plays and the more plays you have to run in a drive, the more difficult it is to score a touchdown in that drive. The best offenses tend to be the ones who can consistently get these big plays down the field. And I don't think either team will do it that much in the Super Bowl, but I definitely think that you know, the Bengals have struggled with it at times this year. And also Joe Burrow, just this was a good job by him. He doesn't always hit the check downs. That's just a very real thing. Now, something like this is another example of what can work for the Bengals where, okay, so this is the, the coverage you see. It is not a two safety deep coverage. It's cover three, but the Broncos play a lot of uh, cover two. And also for this play, the relevance isn't really, you know, again, we're not only talking about cover two here. We're talking about how Burrow will play just in general. The Broncos, like the Rams, will mix stuff up. And watch how right when this play begins, what you're going to notice is that for Joe Burrow, not a lot's open, right? I mean, you can't really get too much open here. Maybe he could try to throw it on a couple of these routes, but it would be dangerous if he did. In zone coverage, typically the guys aren't going to be as open. However, here's where Joe Burrow comes in, and here's the value of Joe Burrow, and this will absolutely come into play in the Super Bowl as well, is that when a play doesn't work, it's not dead with Burrow. If this is Tom Brady, you know, we saw this in the divisional round, the, the play's over. He either throws it away or takes a sack. But watch how Joe Burrow is going to be able to somehow get around this pressure. He's now able to find Jamar Chase, and they're able to pick up a big gain on that one on kind of a broken play. And I think these broken plays might actually be a significant part of the Bengals offense. And typically that's not a great idea, especially when you have a good defensive line that can bring Joe Burrow down. Uh, you don't necessarily love that. But the flip side is I could see this being a low scoring game where a few of these plays might actually be the difference. So for Joe Burrow, that's absolutely something good going for you if you're a Bengals fan. Although the flip side is something like this, where you're going to see that Joe Burrow, he kind of does the same thing. Original play he didn't love, so he tries to make something else happen and instead turns the ball over. That was obviously a mistake. Now, he's not horrible at this. Like, he's not Jameis Winston when this kind of stuff happens, but he will make the occasional mistake. And for the Rams, if he does make that mistake, you have to make him pay. Like, there's just, there's no denying that. Like, Burroughs, his interception totals are pretty high. You look at his turnover-worthy plays, they're not as high. In fact, out of guys who have thrown at least 50% of their team's snaps, Joe Burrow has the fourth least turnover-worthy play percentage. So that's pretty impressive. So he doesn't turn the ball over as much as you might think. I mean, he has turned the ball over, but he doesn't put the ball in harm's way as much. Kind of just gotten a little unlucky. So it's not a big deal, but just this is stuff I've seen on tape, so I wanted to bring it up. But like, I think this plays another example of kind of what I'm talking about. And we all remember this in the AFC Championship game. One multiple times, it seemed like for certain Joe Burrow was going to get sacked and this was going to be the, you know, the end of the Cincinnati Bengals and he was able to get out of it. 
on this play, it's going to be a twist right here, which means that, you know, uh, the, basically, you can probably figure it out, the two Kansas City players who I have arrows, that's the direction they're going to be running into. So basically, it can fool offensive linemen. Look at how right when this play begins, what you're going to notice is that it's relatively working, right? You're going to get pressure to the right guard's left side of his body, and quite frankly, pressure typically comes from that right guard spot. Uh, it's been a real mess, especially as of late for the Bengals. However, watch Burrow just read this so well, knows how to navigate get up in the pocket and he picked up that was a third down and he was able to pick up the first down there so just really good stuff by Joe Burrow right there again that's the value of having a Joe Burrow and that's why I do think Joe Burrow is probably the biggest thing the Bengals have in their favor I think that there's a lot of stuff that lines up for the Rams but the one thing that I think lines up for the Bengals is I think they do have a quarterback advantage I know Stafford's played well this postseason I you know he didn't have his best game in the conference championship but other than that he's played well but I do think that Joe Burrow who maybe hasn't played as well in this postseason uh, compared to the regular season he's had a much better regular season and he can do stuff like that is still showing some great flashes and, and is still playing well in the uh, postseason of course finally we have something like this this is the last play I'm going to talk about but this is an important play as well because like I keep saying the Rams don't only play quarters coverage or cover two and while that's a lot of what I've talked about in most of the videos I think it's important to mention the Rams will try to surprise you and I think that would be a mistake against the Bengals but they might try it because like a play like this it's going to be a cover one blitz and you have Jamar Chase running a go route but what's interesting about it is that it's they're not showing a cover one blitz the 49ers here are showing like they're going to play a cover two of some kind probably maybe even the quarters coverage but they're going to play two safety deeps and probably zone it might be man but basically, Cincinnati will just sprinkle these in there. And I think it's really good. Where They'll just say it on a decent amount of these plays. Hey, let's have T. Higgins or Jamar Chase just run deep and see if, you know, we happen to catch them by surprise when they're running a disguise. Watch how right when this play begins, Burrow looks up. He reads this play and his eyes are probably huge because he knows what he can do. He doesn't even care. Jamar Chase isn't that open. doesn't matter. He's throwing it to, to Jamar Chase here. You have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And hey, maybe that's a way you can get one over on the Bengals. Like if you need a turnover for the Rams, maybe you try something like this and just tell Jalen Ramsey, hey, it's probably a go route. Try to make something happen. However, on this play, you're going to see that without much separation, Chase doesn't need that much, still finds a way to make the grab. I think, it, I think quite frankly, it would be a mistake uh, for the Rams to do this. I think that you do not leave Jamar Chase one-on-one -on -one uh, if you can avoid it, but it's something I could see potentially happening, and if it does happen, I could see a big play that way, uh, and the thing about Burrow is he'll notice this stuff, and that's the nice thing about Burrow is that he's not afraid to give his guys some opportunities. Even if there isn't separation, he'll throw it to them. You think about Jamar Chase's touchdown in the Chiefs game. That was kind of one of those plays. You're not open? That's okay. I'll still give you a chance, and it works out. When you have guys like T. Higgins and Jamar Chase especially, it makes sense. So, all right, final chart here. This is, again, if you, this is the first time you're seeing one of these things, what it is is at the end of each of my preview videos, what I do is I just... Uh, decide to give a value to how I felt about this video. So for Joe Burrow, I'm giving the Bengals a plus five, which might seem high because like, again, the Rams are really good, but kind of the way I view it is, I think the way the Rams match up well is more about the Bengals receivers than it is about Joe Burrow himself. I think Burrow is actually uniquely fit in a great way to really help out the Bengals in a lot of ways and kind of to neutralize some of these areas where the Rams could potentially do some real damage. For example, like I think about the you know the fact that okay one of the biggest disadvantages that the Rams uh, or that the Bengals have going up against the Rams is going to be their offensive line. But the flip side is well Joe Burrow can get out of that. I think about how due to the Rams' good coverage there might not be a ton of separation, but Joe Burrow can put the ball in a good spot and is he knows when to give his receivers a chance. So that is also a big advantage. The question is, will they be able to take advantage of this advantage? And that will largely rely on the receivers, I think, more so than Burrow. But again, this is more for fun. It's not an accurate representation. The final Rams plus four does not mean I will pick the Rams to win. I still haven't made my mind up on that. But that's kind of where I have them now. Uh, again, that's my thoughts on them. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals playing, you know, going to L.A. in an away Super Bowl uh, how valuable do you think Burrow is in this game? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.